Okay, recording is on. Welcome everyone to BC 309, our course on urban church planting. Let's take a moment to pray together and uh, we get started. May I request somebody um, to pray for the class, please? Anyone? I'd like to pray. Shrikumar, would you like to pray? And we will start. Yes, sir. Precious Father, we thank you and praise you, Father God, for this wonderful day which you have given to us. We give you all the glory, honor, and praises for this wonderful day, O oh God. As we are submitting ourselves before your presence, Father, we are asking you, Father God, release your wisdom and understanding so that we can able to grasp every design and every plan what you are having to build and Lord master the church the way how you want us to build, O oh Father God. Father, we give our heart, we give our emotions, we give everything before you so that the flesh should not contradict it. But Lord, let your spirit should prevail over those things, O oh Father God. And let you be glorified through our church. Let you be glorified through everything what we do, God Master. Every secret what you're going to release, Lord Master, let it edify our faith, let it guide us, let it enlighten our understanding, O oh Father God. Thank you, Father God, for you are using your servant, O oh Father God, as we humble ourselves before your holy presence. Lord Master, we pray, let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us and fill us with understanding. To Lord Master, to grasp everything, we should be able to follow everything what you're going to teach us today. All the glory, honor, and praises belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our course on urban church planting. We are taking things forward. Uh, so... Last week, we spent time talking about um, strategies, strategies for urban evangelism. And uh, let me just quickly review some of these things we spoke about. We um, mentioned that, you know, we developed strategies for different age groups, uh, strategies for different areas of need in the city. Um, strategies along different spheres of activity. And then this is where we wanted to talk or pick up on, uh, where we could leverage different tools that are available to reach people in the city. Right, so I'll just um, spend some time. We'll come back to the seven mountains um, yeah, in the next lesson, but let's talk a little bit about tools that we can use. Right? So, Today, uh, we have the advantage of mass media uh, in, in, in reaching people. Now, uh, the challenges are great. The, uh, the cities are very complex and very large compared to, you know, cities back in the, let's say, between the early church or in the early uh, part of this, uh, 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 you know, let's say the first few hundred years of the church when they were evangelizing, things are very different. But today, the cities are huge, are big, are lots and lots of people, usually in, you know, running up in millions of people. Uh, but then we have the advantage of tools that are available, mass media tools. And so we need to think about using these tools in reaching people. I'm just giving some ideas. Uh, uh, not all of them may be applicable uh, to your particular uh, region. But I just want you to think about these kinds of things. Think about you know, using these tools. So one, of course, is the print media, which is uh, you can print traps, you can print books, uh, you can take advantage of print media like newspapers, magazines, and we could use that to creatively reach people. Yeah, um, we could, uh, for example, what we do is uh, we've, you know, we we have certain books that are general or that can be used, um, uh, not necessarily for church people. So, for example, we have a book called "Don't Lose Hope," 
it's a small little booklet. It's a very, just an encouraging thing. They say, don't lose hope. So we would give it out to people, send it out you know, to the public. Um, so it's a, it's a book that gives encouragement, but then it's also a chance for them to get to know the Word of God, and then from there get to know about the church. And if they're interested, they can come to church. So we can use something like that. We have, uh, we also, for example, our book on timeless principles. Uh, we have distributed it out in, you know, in corporate contexts, sometimes in IT parks and other places. Of course, with permission, uh, and we take advantage of uh, certain seasons of the year. Example during Christmas time, and others, and we say, can we keep a book table and we give out our free books. Uh, and usually during those seasons, they would say, yeah, no problem. So we are able to give out these books. And, you know, it's, it's, it's something that they can connect to, like people, professionals can connect to. And if they're interested, they can from there explore the church, explore uh, the word of God and so on. So uh, taking advantage of print media is, is, is good. You know, when, when you're trying to evangelize a city or a part of the city, uh, you can think of how can I use print media to reach people? Yeah. Then a, a, a big area that's available to us today is the internet, social media. Right? So uh, we'll talk about media and technology uh, next semester. We have a course on media and technology. But we can use social media uh, in, in, a very inter in very interesting ways. Um, you know, um, let me just see if I can be pause this for a moment. Um, um, Abraham, I see a comment. You want to translate the book into Vietnamese? Yeah, sure, we can do that. Um, um, uh, yeah, so let me, so, um, yeah, Abraham, um, we have a person who manages the translations. Uh, you can send her an email. Or, oh. yeah. Okay, so this person, Mano Roshan, she's the one who handles our international translations. So we just drop her an email, tell her how you want to do it. Now, we normally pay for our translation. So uh, our, our translators, we pay the translators for doing the work. So you, know, you, you can respond with her and see how that works out. OK, um, let's see how that works out. OK, so what was I saying? Yeah, so what I wanted to do was uh, just show you, you know, a simple uh, uh, example how we can use social media for promotions right so i'm going to our facebook page um, so now we all of you can see this page yeah okay so i just want to show you uh, if somebody un unmute your mic and just tell me you can see this then i can go forward you can see it okay great all right, so what I want to show you is a simple thing, right? See, right now we are doing a sermon series on, it's called Faith and Science, right? So what we're doing is we're running a simple promotion uh, on Facebook, targeting people in Bangalore City. So we have this little post on Facebook, and, uh, and we can boost the post, and I'll show you what we're doing. Um, uh, I know somebody's put some comment here. Somebody's put, okay, I'll come and look at it later. But anyway, so what you can see here, this little promotion, we are boosting this post, and this, we are targeting people in Bangalore City, uh, Bangalore and Mangalore, so two cities, because we have locations in both the cities. And, and, and just for a small amount of money, and I think we're just spending 10,000 rupees or something, uh, we are able to re so far it's been running for a month now uh, till the uh, till october 2nd uh, we are able to present this post to as of now 406000 people so four, over 400000 people have reached 
15,000 people have engaged with this post, about 14,000 have clicked on this link. And when you go to, it just goes to our church website, uh, this URL, uh, and then it gives the location of all our, so if somebody clicks on it, it just goes to this page, or it's on our website, and we just say, look, we, you know, come and join, come and worship, uh, join, join us uh, at these, you know, these are the services that are happening. These are all the locations, etc. It's basically an inv little invitation. So what I'm trying, to, what I want to point out is now, if you go to the ad center. So here we are running this promo. This this promo is currently running. We've spent only so we've put a budget of twenty thousand rupees, and just for twenty thousand rupees, we've so far reached over four hundred thousand people. I mean that this ad has been presented to four hundred thousand people, and fourteen thousand people have clicked on it. You know, so that's very that's very very I would say comparatively very cheap. Right? So you could see here that the cost per link click is only less than a rupee. Now, if we were to do printed handbills, right, printed handbills, and then try to go and distribute it to people all across the city, that would take a lot of effort. Now, we are doing it. The Bible, some of our Bible college students are actually doing some of that. I'll, I'll talk about it. But, but you know, uh, uh, this, so you, it, it, the cost per, per link click is only less than a rupee. We've been able to reach over 400,000 people. Um, let me pause here. I'm hearing some um, messages. What happened? Okay, any questions? Is everything okay? All right, I heard some. Okay, let me go back. So it's going back here. So um, you know. So what I'm what I want to say is that just by using a simple post, um, we are able to reach a huge number of four, over four hundred thousand people. So you know, imagine you're standing on a street corner, you're trying to give out handbills, physically to give out handbills to four hundred thousand people is going to be really difficult. Right, physically, you know, but uh, and plus you don't even know if they'll read it, they'll just probably take it and throw it out and so on. But here, uh, just using social media, Facebook promotion, we can target a certain community, uh, a certain city, in this case, Bangalore City and Mangalore, and it's so cheap, it's less than a rupee per click. That means they actually click and they go onto that web page and they may have looked up, okay, what are these, what are these people doing and so on. And uh, here you can, yeah, right. So you can, we can do this, and then uh, how we can target people. So you know, um, when we, uh, if you go to the ad manager here, when we run an ad, and we've run many ads over the over the years, uh, I just want to show you that when you're running a Facebook ad, um, you can target people. So we are specifically, you know, targeting people who might be interested in uh, this kind of topic. You know, so of course you can say when you want to run, uh, you could say the age group, and then we've given criteria. Okay, these are people. Basically, we're trying to reach educated people, people who might be interested in artificial intelligence, who might be uni uh, overseas, you know, universities and. Uh, you know, I could just put in all kind of criteria. Basically, people are interested in these things. You can target them. You know, so this ad is not just randomly, you know, going around, but it's a targeted ad. This ad is this ad that we are running here on Facebook is targeting people. You know, who are in kind of a certain demographic, and it's only costing us twenty thousand rupees, and we. You know, by the time it's done, we probably hit more than half a million people that we could it would have reached or been presented to, and there would have been a good number of clicks. Okay, so the the point I wanted to share was that um, 
using social media, you know, we can target. Uh, and, and, and from there, we could invite people to come to an event, in this case, the sermon series. Now, uh, is it effective? Well, we've had, uh, I mean, I, I don't know about last Sunday, uh, but the previous Sunday, or I forget not the Sunday, or the first Sunday, or the second Sunday, um, we had people who came to the thing, and, who, and, and last Sunday, actually yesterday, I saw I saw a lot of young people come into the church. Now, I don't know exactly what brought them in, but I saw these new young people, they said, we want to come for this faith and science sermon series, and they saw them walking in. I was informed that there were about 12 people who came the previous Sunday uh, through the ads, and this was our physical ads that were given out by our Bible college students in and around uh, a, a college that they were promoting. So uh, through various promotions, whether it's physical promotions or whether it's through, um, I think somebody's mic is on, you can turn it off. Um, so whether it's through physical promotions, or, let me just see whose mic is on. Kishan, your mic is on, okay. All right. So uh, through uh, physical promotions or social media promotions, you know, there are people who are coming in. The, so think about that. Think about, you know, using Facebook. And like I said, it's just, it just costs us 20,000 rupees to reach, you know, we will eventually reach more than half a million people. Um, yeah, thanks, Asha. I see your comment the first, first Sunday of the series. Yeah, so we had 12 people come because of these you know, handouts given to Bible college students, by the Bible college students. So whatever promotions you can, either you use it to reach people, uh, get them to come for your event. So let's just go back to my notes here. Okay. So the internet, you know, uh, the tools that we have, are, 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 you know, whether it's social media or just, having a website and I'll, I'll talk about that later we can make use of these tools to target you know various uh, cities or people and run promotions and get them to come right so try that out in your city and it doesn't cost much money as i showed you you know running a facebook ad uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money and you can target people in your city uh, and invite them to an event and so on um, Similarly, you can use television. So in many uh, cities, uh, and of course you have these big cable networks which are very expensive, but then there are also these small cable TV operators. Uh, and you could run ads on those smaller cable TV networks and they don't cost too much. So in our early days, we used to do that. Now we don't do it these days, but in the early days, we used to run these scrolling ads on, you know, on cable TVs and call for prayer, and we'd give a number. People would call for prayer. It'll be an opportunity for us to connect to people, uh, and so on. So, you can use television. Um, if we can, of course, use other things like uh, we could use music, like we mentioned. We can use music concerts to reach out to younger people. You could use performing arts. Uh, creative arts, uh, uh, media, uh, arts and entertainment. You could use that to reach out to people. Uh, you could, you know, nowadays because of online uh, interaction, you could use web conferencing and so on. So you can, there is numerous tools that are available for us to reach out to people. I don't want you to think about that. Um, I'll, just, I'll just show you very quickly, you know, one simple website we did. Uh, it's called Examining Jesus, uh, and uh, let me just, you know, we said, okay, let's try to, you know, how do we um, share Jesus online? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure many people have done many things, but, you know, we uh, we had, we put up this little website here, uh, examiningjesus.com, which has you know, just six short videos, about 10 minutes or less on who is Jesus, why was he crucified, his, his resurrection, his miracles, his uniqueness, and what does it take to be a disciple. So just six little short videos you know, that we have. And then, you know, we, we promote this. And so those who want to come and listen, 
can come and listen. If they want to send a response, they can send a response to us and so on. So just, just a simple online presence trying to share about Jesus. And then we're kind of expanding this website to something more on uh, apologetics. And so that work uh, is going on. And so uh, think about ways by which you could use the internet, uh, use uh, uh, online promotions, uh, other things by which you can reach out to people, make use of tools. We'll get into uh, a lot more detail on media and technology in that course. Um, now I'm just kind of, you know, telling, uh, sharing, just pointing us to the fact that uh, we can look in, look at uh, leveraging tools that are available for us to reach out to people. Now, I want to move into talking a little bit about the seven mountain assignment. Now, some people are familiar with this uh, idea. Uh, some may not be, but I'll just introduce this and talk a little bit about that. So, uh, uh, in, in 1975, uh, there were two Christian leaders. Uh, Bill Bright was the founder of uh, Campus Crusade. Lauren Cunningham was the founder of uh, Youth with a Mission. Uh, both of them, both these organizations are pretty well known worldwide. Um, it, it was very really interesting that in that year or around that time, God spoke to both of them and as well as uh, another theologian, Dr. Francis Schaefer, basically putting the same um, idea in their hearts, their minds, um, that if the church in any nation were, uh, were, were able to affect the seven spheres or seven mountains or seven pillars of society, they can impact any nation for Jesus Christ. So the message was, what was in their hearts? If the church can affect these seven spheres, or, you know, he used different language, so it could be mountains of society, seven pillars of society, or seven mountains of, of society. If the church can affect these seven spheres, they can impact any nation for Jesus Christ. And these seven spheres, or seven mountains, but these seven areas where people are involved in family, religion, education, media, uh, arts and entertainment, and business or economy, and government. So if God's people would intentionally get into these spheres and be salt and light, be, you know, have impact, affect the culture, affect people, then they could disciple any nation. It was interesting that Lauren Cunningham and uh, Bill Bright, when they met, they shared these things with each other. They realized that God was speaking the same thing to both of them. And that at that time, in 1975, they were, they were prominent Christian leaders, Bill Bright and Lauren Cunningham, because they were leading Christian organizations that were big worldwide. And so God spoke and put it in their hearts. The church needs to go in and needs to influence these spheres of society. And if they can do that, they can disciple a nation. Now, it's the reason I'm presenting it to us is if we can think about this at our city level, you know, so we are planting a church, we are doing a church plant in an urban setting. So in a city, you're planting a church. Okay, good. What can we do to impact the city and maybe even to some extent the nation? What can we do? Well, we can pick up on this idea that if we can mobilize people, God's people, to go into these seven spheres and begin to influence these seven spheres, we can begin to disciple the city or begin to disciple the nation. We can begin to influence 
you know, that uh, uh, as we work in these seven spheres. So the challenge then is, you know, how do we go about this? How do we do it? And, you know, uh, uh, what are some things we can do, especially when you're doing an urban church plant? How can you, I, I, this task is very big, getting into these seven spheres and influencing people in these seven spheres. It's very big. But if each of us, when we begin to do our church plant or our ministry, we can in some way think in those lines and try to work towards that. You know, all of us can contribute. You know, meaning every church, every ministry is working in the city, and we all are, you know, working towards this. We can, in some way, uh, contribute towards the net result, which is discipling the city or the nation. Right. So, here, here are some quotes, uh, things that have been shared. So, Lauren Cunningham said, "Salvation comes before discipleship." However. Preparation comes in the soil before the seed is planted. So the soil is, re is referring to the worldview. If the soil is hard and unprepared, then it doesn't produce. Right? So you prepare the soil, you prepare their worldview, you affect their worldview. And then when you drop the seed, it is in a better position to pro produce. So what he was actually referring to is before the seed of the gospel can be sown and salvation happens and then discipleship, there has to be a preparation of the soil, which he, the soil is referring to the worldview, I mean how the person thinks about the world. If we can go and affect their worldview, their perspective, what we are doing is we are preparing the soil for the seed of the gospel. So that's what he was talking about when he uh, was saying, okay, let's transform culture, you know, by transforming their worldview, by affecting their worldview, by saying. So what's the point? The point is God's people should go into the seven spheres and as a first step, transform culture. That means affect the worldview of people, the belief systems of people challenge their hearts and minds so that you prepare them to receive the seed of the gospel, prepare the soil to receive the seed of the gospel. That's the first step. So if, if God's people can begin to do that, then slowly, of course, the gospel has to be preached, people can be saved, and then they can be discipled. It's part of the process, but the first step in the process, which is transforming culture or affecting the world view of people, in these seven spheres. How do we do that? What are some things we can do? Right? So very important is that God's people, and I say God's people, I'm talking about believers, are able to model biblical principles in these seven spheres. What are the seven spheres we're talking about? We're talking about, you know, family, religion, education, media, arts and entertainment, business or economy and government. So in these seven spheres, if God's people are entering and they need to go take up their positions, that means get their jobs in these places, they engage meaningfully in all of these areas. And while they are doing that, they need to model biblical principles. So as they live it out, people see, oh, they, their perspective is different. The way they do things is different. And so it's beginning to challenge their worldview, their belief system. Right? And so God's people need to be uh, modeling biblical principles in these seven spheres. And, 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 and so it's, Jesus said, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like 11. So it's just a little bit, you put it in, and then it begins to affect the whole dough, or the whole flower. flower. Uh, it begins to affect the whole the environment around it. So just God's people beginning to be that leaven by modeling biblical principles. So we talk about 
you know, whether it's integrity or excellence or justice or, you know, so when God's people begin to model it, they'll begin to affect culture, people's worldview um, in these seven spheres. Okay. Are, are you all with me so far? Uh, did I lose anybody? We all together? Everybody's okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. So let's go back. All right. Thank you for your response in the chat. So, so that's that's the first thing. So when you apply, when you and I, when we're doing work in the city, what must we do? We must help other people. So you're planting a church, or you're doing a ministry. Help other people to learn how to model biblical principles wherever they are in any of these seven spheres. So you tell them, see, don't be afraid to engage in these areas whether it's business, whether it's education, whether it's government, whether it's art or media, or whether it's family, whatever, you know, all these things, you, you be there. And most of us are already there, and you know, in certain areas, we're already there by default. And in those places, you live by the kingdom, by kingdom principles. What are we doing? We are, we are challenging the culture. We're challenging the world view of people. And in the process, we are preparing them to receive the gospel. Right? A second way we do this is by letting a light shine through our good works. That means through what we do. So Jesus taught us that, right? In Matthew 5, 13 to 16, very familiar passage, he said, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. And then he said, you know, let your light shine before people, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So we must encourage other people, you know, as you go into these seven spheres, let point to God through your good works. And now the good works could be, you know, just depending on what, where you are, you do well. So, example, if somebody's in business, well, you do well there, and you bless the people, and let that, uh, when you do business well, let that point to your father who is in heaven. Somebody may be in education, okay, be a good professor, could be a good lecturer, be a good school teacher, and just do that well. And uh, through that, what are we doing? We are pointing to our Father who is in heaven. Somebody may be doing social work. Somebody may be caring for the poor. Uh, yes, people are doing so many different things. But Jesus said, through what you're doing, you point to your Father who is in heaven. No. So Lauren Cunningham said this. He said, you know, use the wealth of the world to bless the world. And bless it, uh, and bless it not just those not just those in blessing the needy, but also bless it to multiply it. That means uh, you use the wealth of the world. You're not only just blessing those who are in need, but you're multiplying what is there so people can have plenty. You're blessing the people, right? So blessing the needy, you're blessing them by multiplying it both ways. And you're using the wealth of the world. So this is, you know, probably relevant to those who are in business and you know, commerce. You're blessing the people, you're blessing those who are in need. And what's the net result? People see what we're doing and they glorify our Father. Thirdly, of course, we must engage in spiritual transformation. That means we understand that to affect culture, there's also a spiritual process involved. Because uh, we understand that the God of this world has blinded the minds of people, you know. Uh, he's brought in wrong ideas, philosophies, arguments, uh, things that have come in which are blinding the minds of people. And so we engage in spiritual transformation through prayer, through worship, through the proclamation of the gospel. Things that will dismantle, will pull down these strongholds 
in the minds of people because that's what's creating or influencing their worldview. Right? There's a spiritual influence on their worldview. There are ideas, philosophies that are being promoted by the enemy. And so what do we do? We engage in spiritual transformation. That means we pray, we worship, and we proclaim the gospel, proclaim the truth, so that we can challenge what the enemy is doing to blind uh, the minds of people. So basically, there are these three ways that we need to help other people, and I say other people meaning believers, transform the culture. So as part of your local church, church block, or the ministry you are doing in an urban context, keep this before you. I have this ministry or this church that whatever God has called you to plant, start in the urban setting, should eventually affect the seven spheres of society. We should be able to touch all of these seven spheres. Now, it may not happen overnight, it's, it's, it's a journey, but keep that vision in front of you. We need to be able to affect business, and education, government, all these spheres we should go. How are we going to do it? It's going to be through the people. So what must we do? We should train our people so that they can model biblical principles, they can do really good work so that those good works will point to the Father, and also they can engage in spiritual transformation, which is to pray, to worship, to communicate the gospel so that the strongholds of the enemy can be pulled down and the light of the gospel can penetrate people. Right? Now, for that to happen, of course, we have to prepare our people. Right, the preparation. The church has to be prepared. When I say church, I mean God's people, believers. They have to be prepared to do this because it's going to be through the people that this is going to happen. So think about the city where you are doing your church plant. As people are coming in to your church or the ministry you're doing, people are being part of it, equip them and prepare them to go and influence the seven spheres. Right? How are we going to do that? So remember, these seven spheres or these seven mountains are actually a battleground. So what do you mean? means that the devil is also operating in these seven spheres. He's also got his influence going. Things are happening. The enemy is very interested. And he, he's got his, his influence over the people involved in, in all of these spheres. Satan is also working. You know, remember when Jesus when Satan tempted Jesus, he showed him all the kingdoms of this world, the glory of it, and he said, All this is given to me. So that means he's, he's got these things in control, the glory of these nations. He's got his influence there in all these seven spheres. So it's a battleground. We're not saying it's go, oh, just go there, it's easy, you know. It's not easy. Because there's an enemy who's also operating in those seven mountains with seven spheres. Uh, and believers have to be prepared to go. One, and so let's talk about preparation. How do you prepare? Very important. The hardest to be prepared. Because this is this can be a place where the enemy can affect people, right? God's people, I'm talking about God's people. Now, how would the enemy work against God's people? Well, we got to protect our heart because in many of these spheres, there are the lust for money, power, influence, other appetites in these spheres. So think about business. You can somebody can go there and say, okay, I want to glorify God. So the believer goes up there and then he gets pulled into pursuing money and success, whatever. And he forgets that I'm supposed to transform culture so that the gospel can come 
these people can receive the gospel and they can experience salvation and be disciples. He forgets that. And he could just pursue success, money, and now, you know, if God wants to bless somebody with money and success, no, we're not against that. But it is so easy for a believer to get caught up in that and forget about transforming culture and influencing people to receive the gospel. Or we to keep our desires pure, says we perceive success and so on. Our hearts must be pure. Right? So guard our desires, guard our motivations, why we are doing things. Do we want to glorify God? Of course, we want to bless people, we want to transform society, we want to add value, but most importantly, we want to glorify God. That should be our motivation. We must also guard our character, because in all of these areas, uh, there are difficult decisions to be made. So as believers are engaging in business and education and government and uh, you know media and arts and entertainment, all of these areas are difficult decisions to be made. And if they don't have strong character, they could compromise on those decisions and then it will no longer be a good testimony. It will not point to the Father who is in heaven. So as part of preparing God's people, there has to be hard preparation. Only then God's people can go in and make a difference in these seven spheres. So like that, there has to be spiritual preparation. They need to learn biblical principles. You know, what are the biblical principles I'm supposed to live by? Uh, how can I tap into spiritual resources? How can I tap into the anointing of the Holy Spirit and faith in God and uh, the gifts of the Spirit and the prophetic and signs and wonders miracles in these seven spheres? So God is not, um, you know, uh, uh, God is God. It's not like God cannot do miracles in these things. And just uh, uh, this past week, we received a testimony. Uh, uh, the, so the previous Sunday, um, that was uh, not the 18th, but the 11th Sunday, towards the end of the service, I mean, this was after the message and all that during prayer time, I suddenly had a word, uh, and it was about contract. And I just saw, so I just spoke it. This was in the central church service. I said, you know, contracts that have been withdrawn are going to be given back to you. Uh, so I just released that word. There was a man sitting there. In the service, he, he's, he's, he's in the scientific area, scientific business area. Uh, they do scientific research, whatever. So he was there, and he received that word because um, a contract that he, you know, he was bidding on something, and it was had been withdrawn, so on. But he received it. The next day, that is Monday. That other company who had withdrawn the contract caught that, called him again and said, can you submit a new bid? He submitted a new bid and they accepted it and everything came through. And so he sent a testimony yeah, yeah, by email about all of this. Happened within, within one week. So the point is, see, he, he's, he's engaging in his field, which is scientific research, whatever he's doing, he's running a business there. And how a word given, he received, and he saw it happen within that same week, everything unfolded. So God's people need to know that when you're engaged in these seven spheres, you can also tap into you know, the supernatural, you can tap into the anointing of God and the prophetic word, and, and God will do miracles. So. That's part of their spiritual preparation to engage in one of these seven spheres that uh, they may be involved. And of course, there's natural preparation. You know, they need to be good. They need to develop their skills and capabilities and do well. And so, so three areas how we can help prepare people to get into these seven mountains. Their hearts have to be prepared. Otherwise, the enemy can knock them out there. God, their motivations, God, their character. Spiritually, they need to be prepared so they know what are the biblical principles to apply and how they can tap into spiritual resources God has given to them. 
and then of course they need to prepare naturally which is you know get their skills and uh, keep being get good at whatever they're doing right so uh, what we are saying here is that when we are pioneering a work in a city we need to think about the city as a whole look at the seven spheres or seven areas in which people are engaging and prepare the church, prepare believers to go in and make a difference, right? And so we're just kind of giving a little roadmap on how to do that. I'm going to pause here. I'll take up some questions and we will come back tomorrow and finish up this little last piece in this lesson. Um, any questions so far? Louis, please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, class. Uh, I just want to ask a question. I'm studying this um, this area of um, I don't know to call it above for a while now. And from what you from what you you said, if the church is to um, influence and um, influence with the gospel and all that don't don't w are we going to come to a point where the several mountains will start looking like the church or they will have their own unique um fabric and um, structures mm. okay so we're not so uh, so we're not saying that the seven mountains will start looking like the church. Neither are we saying that, you know, everything on the seven mountains will be taken over by the church. That's not what we're saying. So there is a group, or there is, I should say, you know, um, a certain segment of the Christian church who have pushed this whole idea of seven mountains to an extreme saying that okay the church is going to take over everything on these seven mountains and that's not what was actually intended so we go back to the great commission jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations and he didn't go and say uh establish the church in you know or you know uh, make everything christian go and make disciples right so there will always be people who would choose not to become disciples. That's their choice. So what, what we are saying is we need to get into these seven spheres and influence them so that we can bring the gospel, fulfill the Great Commission, which is disciple people in these seven spheres. We are not saying that we take over these seven mountains. That's not the point. The point is not to take over seven mountains. There will always be people who don't choose to follow Jesus, but instead we are saying we need to influence them uh, with the gospel, first starting with influencing their worldview so that then the seed of the gospel can be planted, so that then they can give, be given an opportunity to receive Christ and become disciples. That's what we are saying. So I am aware that in some parts of Christian and Christian world, they've taken this to an extreme, saying the church is going to occupy all of the seven mountains. But that will happen only when you, if you look at Isaiah uh, chapter 2 and Malachi chapter 4, that will happen in the millennium. Then in the sense of the millennium, it says the mountain of the Lord's house will be established upon the mountains. That's a different scenario. It's in the millennium. But in this church age, we are called to disciple people, which is, uh, bring them to faith in Christ. Did I explain myself okay? Did I answer your question? Thank you, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, any other question? Sri Kumar, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I just want to know uh, one more thing uh, regarding to the uh, media and um, uh, not in uh, Seven Mountains. But regarding to when you are explaining those uh, Facebook thing and on internet and other thing, 
So do we have a special class for that um, where we get trained for how to uh, use the Facebook and um, you know this internet or the media to how to um, take the gospel? I just want to know. Thank you. Yeah, so next semester, uh, we have a course on media and technology uh, where we will be going through everything that, at least uh, at APC that we're doing, uh, I will just take you through everything um, uh, and how you can use media and technology and all those things uh, for the ministry, just sharing with you what we're doing. But um, because we're doing it online, uh, a lot of that will not be hands-on. That means uh, uh, we won't be able to, to actually get you to do it. I can I can show you how it's done, but um, so the Bible college students who are with us here, uh, they are given the opportunity to do some of these things hands-on, like. Uh, you know, some of them are learning how to do, handle the camera and do the video shoots and how the live stream is happening. And so some, they are learning how to do it because they are here and we are actually putting, you know, they're actually doing it on Sundays and whatever they are interested, you know, in, not everybody's doing everything, but whatever they are interested, those are interested in live streaming or camera or those things that they get involved in it and they learn how to do it hands on. But the course that we're going to do next semester is, uh, let's say, a theoretical course. It just exposes you to, these are all the things that are there, and these are the things that you need to look at or you can look at, but uh, it's not a hands-on course because uh, that will require a lot of time and that's happening, you know, with those who are here in person. Um, I'm just trying to think how to help if you want to learn something. Uh, let's see. Anyway, so that's where things are, Shri Kumar, uh, because the hands-on things happens on Sundays, and you know the students who are here in person. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so let's pause here for today. We will continue this next Sunday, uh, not next Sunday, tomorrow, uh, we will finish this. Uh, just a little bit, an overview of, you know, how to train people, how to help people be salt and light to impact these seven spheres so that we can make disciples the way Jesus taught us to. Okay, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Could somebody close in prayer, please? All right, I'll pray. Go ahead, Harrison. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the duration. We thank you for your world that we've had this morning, this afternoon, or this evening. And we thank you because it's going to bear fruit in our lives. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Lord, that the words that we've heard, oh God, we will use it, oh God, to to expand your kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us not to be selfish with the knowledge that we've gotten. But, Father, we shall also go out to God and share this knowledge mm -hmm. to us, as many as possible in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for your servant whom you're using, O God, to impact this word of wisdom, word of knowledge, word of understanding, that we might be a, a salt, O God, to the earth, that we may be that we might be, O oh God, a light to our generation. Help us, O oh God, to be that which you want us to be. And Lord, Father, I pray that you bless APC and give them the strength, O oh God, to continually expand your kingdom for your glory. In Jesus' much less name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, see you all again tomorrow. God bless. Have a good day. Uh, Thank you, Pastor. Rest of the day. God bless you. God bless each one. See you tomorrow. I know. Thank you, Pastor.